Lyft, Didi, Tesla. There are dozens of companies now in the transportation space that did not exist 10 years ago that now have market capitalizations bigger than that of the Ford Motor Company or General Motors. So something is fundamentally changing. I'm preaching to the choir here. You all live it every day. But I'm going to speak from kind of the tech world and talk a little bit about what's happening behind the scenes. Everybody knows the trends, but I want to talk about what we see as some of the implications. I think this is kind of the important point for all of us in the transportation world. Eight billion. That's the amount of hours wasted in congestion in the United States every year. Not total drive time for commuters, the incremental amount of time wasted in congestion. So there's an enormous societal cost to traffic congestion and our transportation problems. 1.2 billion, this is the amount of gallons of gas wasted in congestion every year in the United States. Again, staggering when you think about energy independence, pollution, carbon emissions, and things like that. But the most important number is the last one, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. 37,000. That's how many deaths there are in the United States due to roadway fatalities. So when we talk about transportation, this isn't like the next social revolution or Fortnite where it's kind of nice to have. Well, we're talking about our real core societal problems. And when you look globally, you look at markets like Moscow or Sao Paulo, you look at um, Beijing, these numbers are far worse in developing countries than they are here in the United States. So we're talking a massive global societal problem with big ramifications. And as you all know, cities are really struggling right now to keep up with these problems. The real benefit for reducing congestion is not so much having autonomous vehicles, it's around shared vehicles. And the reason is, as more and more vehicles become shared, and as we go from a world where 10, 15% of uh, trips into the basically urban areas are basically TNCs and shared vehicles, what you see is in a world where that number becomes 50, 60, 70%, you don't need the on-street parking that you have today. Instead of a world where everyone drives their own car into a city, parks it for eight hours a day, and then drives their own vehicle home, now you have a world where you don't need that on-street parking. So you can literally, in most cities, double capacity, lane capacity, in the urban areas because you can eliminate on-street parking. You don't need the amount of parking because more vehicles are used a higher percentage of the time. So reduced congestion is a big benefit of the ACEs. Obviously, increased safety. If you look at the safety statistics from Waymo, which is generally acknowledged as the most advanced uh, autonomous vehicle in the world right now, on a per mile driven basis, the amount, on a per mile driven basis, the accidents, the safety is much higher right now than what you see with a human driven vehicle. And the reason they're safer already, and this is while they're still working on algorithms, they're still doing piloting, it's simply because the autonomous vehicle can see 360 degrees around it, whereas you can't. As an individual driver, you can only see in front of you. And as you know, this being the DOT, about 90% of overall accidents are caused by human error. So increased safety is a big benefit. And you'll see this, obviously, today, where there's vehicles already on the road, level two, level three, that are already adding ADAS capabilities. If there's someone on the road ahead of you, that vehicle will stop whether or not you hit the brake. If it detects a red light, that vehicle will stop, even if you didn't see it. Right? These kind of things are already basically reducing fatalities uh, on a worldwide basis. But as I think about where we're at today, the problems that exist, and I think about what the next 10 years will look like, I know many people say, well, this is so far out. But again, I want to take you back to where we started. 10 years ago, we're flying traffic helicopters to figure out where traffic is. Now it's all data coming off a car. You've got autonomous vehicles now being piloted in more than a dozen cities in the United States alone. You've got electric vehicles right now, or about 2% 2, 2 of the overall vehicles. Uh, within the next year, that, or the next two years or so, that goes to about 5, 6, 7, 8%. You've got shared vehicles becoming more and more dominant. You've already got in many cities, like New York, where there's more rideshare trips than there are taxi cab trips. And that number will only continue to grow. So I'm excited about the future. I think there can be a huge positive impact, but of course it only works when cities in the public sector work with the private sector, value the work that each is doing, and then work obviously towards this vision for a better future.